to open the book of Romans in chapter number 9. Uh, was it chance not to teach a, on election this morning, even though it is very prevalent in chapter 9 of Romans. But I want to pick up right after where Paul brings that up about Jacob versus Esau. Verse number 17 of uh, one of our Larry's favorite verses. Amen. Romans 9, starting in verse 17. It says, For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, I might show my power in thee, that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will be hardened. Amen. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that replies against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Right. Hath the potter power or the clay the same lump? To make one vessel an honor and another a dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath and make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath, fitted to destruction? that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessel of mercy, which he had before prepared in the glory, even us whom he hath called not the Jews only, but also the Gentiles. Amen. Here our, our text starts with Pharaoh. And so now Brother Larry quotes this a lot, and we really can use it to apply it to rulers in our day, even mm -hmm. wicked rulers. That God has raised them up. Mm -hmm. Pharaoh was an evil ruler, and yet God had a purpose even in him. Well, I'm certain God has a purpose even in Mr. Biden. Sure. <coughs> this is even for the same purpose that I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and I might declare, or my name might be declared throughout all the earth. If you'll recall back in Exodus, he said that he would get honor upon Pharaoh and upon his chariots. Amen. Certainly he did when he destroyed them in the Red Sea and delivered his own people. Amen. Verse 18 says, Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Right. So I found it interesting that in Exodus, when Moses and Aaron were going before Pharaoh, sometimes it says the Lord hardened his heart, other times it says that Pharaoh hardened his own heart. Right. This kind of leads into the point I want to look at is this, the sovereignty of God and the responsibility of man. Amen. Ultimately, it is God who is sovereign over whom we will have mercy and whom we will be hardened. You know, the Armenian doesn't like to go to this verse very often because it tells very plainly that God will have mercy on whom we will. Amen. Others he will harden if he so pleases. Right. You know, man likes to think that this teaching is not fair or unjust, but yet, really, it would be just if God was all in our sins, wouldn't it? You're right. He had no mercy on any of us. So verse 19 says, Thou wilt say then unto me, Why does he yet find fault for who hath resisted his will? Amen. You might say, If God is sovereign, then what can we do about it? Hmm. So this idea of the sovereignty of God and the responsibility of man is seen by some as a contradiction. So some might call it a, a paradox. Uh, J.I. Packard goes as far as to call it an antinomy in his book, Evangelism and the Sovereignty of God. That is, an antinomy is a contradiction in laws or ideas that yet both are equal and even necessary. Right. Amen. Amen. Hmm. So both the responsibility of man and the sovereignty of God are both equally true, and yet, in man's logic, they seem contradictory, don't they? Mm -hmm. That God is ultimately sovereign in all things, and controls all things, and how can man be responsible for his actions? Or if man is responsible for his actions, then how is it that God is controlling all things? So, it's a difficult concept, I guess, to grasp in our carnal minds. But the mysteries of God are often 
far outside the confines of the Carnal Mine North Bay. Mm -hmm. so I'd like to look at a few scriptures that point that both of these are definitely true. I don't think I need to convince anyone here, but the sovereignty of God is obviously displayed throughout the scriptures. Amen. Uh, Daniel chapter 4, verse 35. Does all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and if you do it according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? My bad. He is sovereign over both heaven and earth. So it's not that he is sovereign over heaven and then fighting with the devil over earth. Right. The Psalms 115, verse 3 says, Our God is in the heavens, he have done whatsoever he hath pleased. Amen. But it's not, you know, he does what he is able to do. No, he does whatever he wants to do. Amen. That's exactly right. Of course, we know that is within the confines of his character. Yep. For the scripture does say he cannot lie. Amen. We we'll go on to say he cannot sin, for he is perfect righteousness. Not to say he does righteousness, he is righteousness. Amen. In Ephesians 1 11 says he works all things at the counsel of his own will. God did not take advice from man. He can sit down before time and say, well, man, what do you think I should do about this? Mm -hmm. Isaiah very clearly says that he didn't take counsel for anyone. No one taught him. Amen. Well, God certainly is sovereign over all things. Not only yeah. creation, but salvation. Mm -hmm. well, I was I was thinking on this, I was well, the Armenian says that man has, you know, quote unquote free will and salvation. Yeah, even I've heard Armenians pray that God might save the lost. Right. If they didn't believe that God was sovereign over that, then why would they pray such to him? Amen. I mean, is there really any any need to pray to God something that he cannot fulfill? <coughs> well, I, really in praying such they must at least admit that it is God who controls the hearts of men. Amen. And the responsibility of man is very clear in scriptures as well. But we saw two of these verses uh, Wednesday night. I know some of y'all weren't here. Micah 6, 8. Because the Lord has shown thee, O man, what is good and what the Lord requires thee, what to do justly, and to love, love mercy, and walk humbly with thy God. So it's a requirement of man to do Amen. those things. Not, not only is it good, but he says it's required. It's not just some suggestion or not just some philosophy that man ought to live by if he wishes to do good. No, it is what the Lord requires of man. Amen. And then Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Let's hear the conclusion of the matter. This is the whole duty of man to fear God and keep his commandments. Amen. It is man's duty to fear God and keep his commandments. Yeah. You're right. And then the New Testament, Acts 6 or Acts 17, 30 says that. But now God commanded all men everywhere to repent. Mm -hmm. Command goes out to everyone to repent. You know, we know not all heed that command, do they? Obviously not all are keeping the requirements that God has set forth. Yes, the command is there. Yes, the requirements are set forth, yet man does not keep them. Right. So we cannot to diminish the one and exalt the other. We cannot say that God is sovereign, therefore man is not responsible. We can't say man is responsible, therefore God is not sovereign. Both are equally true. We must Amen. preach and teach both. Amen. You know, it seems that we as sovereign grace Baptists are those that hold a more Calvinistic view of salvation tend to promote the sovereignty of God and leave off the responsibility of man. You're right. Amen. I think we do a fairly good job of not doing that, but the primitive Baptists even seem to go as far as to say that those who come will be saved and they won't even realize it. Yep. <laughs> man will stand before God and give an account one day. That's it. Amen. But we won't be able to plead well, God, you're sovereign. It's your fault. Right. Well, you may say then what about verses like John chapter 
5 verse 40 it says that no man will come to me of course John 6 44 says none can come to me mm -hmm. and then again Romans 8 8 says those that are in the flesh cannot please God amen the man in of himself cannot and will not come to God amen you're right yet man is without excuse Romans 1 verse 20 and 21 tell us Let's go back there for a moment. We kind of touched on this in Adam's class recently. Romans 1, verse 20 and 21 say, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Amen. Well, man is without excuse before God. He says he's revealed himself in creation. He's really written the law of God upon the hearts of every man. Every man has what we call a conscience. So that man doesn't want to be responsible before God, does he? You're right. So I, if I could say this way, man, could come to God, but he, his will prevents him from it. Mm -hmm. He will not come to God of his own. Amen. You're right. Go back to that verse in John 6, 44. It says, No man can come to me except the Father that sent me draw him. Amen. It was not that man can come to him under no circumstances whatsoever, but he will not come to God unless God draws him. Amen. So, the natural man is really bound by his sinful nature, isn't he? The, you know, in theological terms, some describe this as that he possesses natural ability but not moral ability. That he, that he, in theory, could come to God, but he never will come to God. Right. Going back to our text, though, Paul kind of addresses this here. Paul knew that they would ask him this, and that's why he brought up. Question in verse 19, Thou wilt say unto me, Why is he yet find fault for who hath resisted his will? And certainly none of us can ultimately resist his will, can we? Amen. None can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? Amen. Is all Daniel. But you cannot thwart the plan of God. You're right. The verse 20 says, Nay, but O man, who art thou that replies against God? Shall I think form us? Say to him that formed it, why hast thou made me thus? Who are we to question God? Mm -hmm. Whether Kenny goes out and builds a house, he can make it with one bedroom or six bedrooms. You know, it's his creation, if you will. Mm -hmm. Would it be right for the house to say, well, why'd you make me thus? Mm -hmm. All right. That's really just as silly, if you will, as a man questioning why God is Mm -hmm. what he has done. Well, who art thou that replies against God? Who art thou that complains against God, if you will? <coughs> Shall the thing form say to him that formed why hast thou made me thus? Mm -hmm. well, the Creator can make what he will, as he wills, how he will. You're right. Amen. And going any further, he can do with it whatsoever he wishes. So if I, if I made two vases, one turned out pretty ugly and one turned out fairly nice looking, the man would say, well, you gotta get rid of that ugly one. Mm. But what if I, being the creator, wanted to break in pieces the beautiful one and put on display the ugly one? Mm. That would be my prerogative, wouldn't it? Amen, you're right. Really so it is with God, he can do with his creation as he wants to, as it says in verse 21, hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel and honor and another and a dishonor. Man doesn't like this idea that God can do with his creation as he wants to. Yet if he wishes to make one vessel, one a vessel of honor, one vessel of dishonor, he can so do it. Amen. We see, I think, very plainly this on during the crucifixion, we have two thieves. One hanging on each side of Christ. So they both see 
the title that's placed for him. This is Jesus, King of the Jews, both. I think here, Jesus praying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Amen. Both are in the same condemnation. As far as man is concerned, both have the same opportunity to repent. Mm -hmm. You get one is saved and one is hardened. Is that not God using one vessel in honor and one in the dishonor? Right. Verse 22 goes on to say, What if God, willing to show his wrath and make his power known unto, or known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath, fit to destruction? That he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. I'm going to say, in everything and in everyone, God reveals some aspect of his character. God could have, if he will, ordained it that Adam would live perfectly without sin for all. The world would have been filled with his offspring. And he would get all the glory and honor out of that, wouldn't he? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yet we would have never learned the, really of his wrath and his justice and his hatred for sin. Yet when Adam sinned, he could have destroyed Adam and Eve and really all of his creation that was cursed. Yet we would see, and that is great wrath and his justice and his hatred for sin, but we wouldn't see his mercy and his grace and his love towards his people. Right. Amen. So, on the vessels of dishonor, or as he calls them the vessels of wrath, he shows his wrath, he makes his power known, he shows his long suffering towards them. But on us that are his, here we're called the vessels of mercy, which he has a four prepared in the glory. Mm -hmm. One day we will see that glory fulfilled in us. Amen. One day we'll see that glory to its fullest when we call that glorified body as we call it and <coughs> are forever with the Lord. Amen. But on the other hand, the vessels of wrath, they will see with the power of God, the justice of God who will upon them for all eternity in the Amen. lake of fire. But really, it's not up to us to question why God does with His creation, why He does what He does. <coughs> well, I, I fully believe my own father was not a saved man who looked up his eyes in hell. Mm. So that's a hard truth for some people, but yet, so who are we to question why God does with His creation mm. what He will? You're right. Amen. Amen. You know, if we are saved, we have to think that we he had that mercy upon us. You know, I fully believe God is able to save Mr. Biden. Amen. Amen. Yet if he doesn't do so, then that is his prerogative. That's it. But if he uses him to destroy this nation, that is his so that's really his call, if you will. Yeah. Amen. Even though God is sovereign in all these things, it does not excuse us as men just to say, well, God, what can I do about it? You were ordained it this way. Mm -hmm. you know, Judas was not excusable for his actions, was he? Amen. Certainly he had been foreordained to betray the Son of God, to betray Christ, to sell him 30 pieces of silver. But really, he only acted within the confines of his nature. That he was a devil from the beginning. So Amen. Was, Amen. But it's not that God took one of his that were saved and then turned him into some wicked, vile creature. He was already that. Amen. It says that he was that Christ was foreordained to be crucified. That he was delivered by the permanent counsel of God. Amen. Amen. And it was by wicked hands that slew him, the same verses. They might say, well, was that not doing the purpose of God? <laughs> well, certainly they were, but that doesn't mean they were excusable for their wickedness. Amen. So man really always acts within the confines of his own will, doesn't he? His own nature, we might say. Amen. That's what, going back to our earlier point, that's the problem with natural man is 
in himself able to do that which is good. Right. Not able to come to God. Not that God makes him evil. He really just acts according to his nature. Mm -hmm. You're right. Just like a pig wallows in the mud. Because mm -hmm. that's his nature. Like I said, you can bring it in, you can clean it up, you can paint its toenails if you will. Yet once you let it go free, it's going to go right back to the mud. Right. You bet. The man sometimes tries to do the same thing. He tries to come in and clean up his act a little bit. But left to himself, he'll go right back to sin. That's it. Well, for us that are saved, we thank God that he's given us a new nature, a new heart. Without that, we would not come to God. Without that, we could not come to God. Amen. Without that, we could not please Amen. him. And it's really only by that nature that we can do any bit of good. Oh, man certainly is responsible before God, but yet God is still very much sovereign over all his creation. Though these two terms may seem contradictory to many, they're both equally true. Amen. They both equally must be preached and taught. Amen. Man is required to serve God, yet God will ultimately get the glory even in those that don't serve him. Yeah. Yeah, who are we to question him? Who are we to say, well, God, why did you do it that way? Oh, well, God knows what he's doing a lot better than we do. Amen. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and close with that. Amen.